we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father, who helps at dawn, we believe that you are almighty. May we be servants of power who are not ashamed in front of you. May we do well and to give profit to others as your child. Faith is to give you glory, to give others profit, and for me and my blessings to have blessings. That is your blessing. May we receive that help this dawn. Every family. How many filthy evil spirits have control over us, over our personalities. The biggest problems in our lives are because of evil spirits. May we cleanse them by the blood of Christ and may Satan not take a foothold. May we be guided into victory. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's say together, sheep. Let's say to the person next to us, let's do more well. Let's do more well. May we surely do more well. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. Even now God is working. How precious is God? But what is amazing, why is it that I don't do well? If you look at your children, you'll know. You look at people who come to our church, them, their children, they do not serve God. That's because of the parents' heart. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18. It's exactly. So those parents act as if they believe in Jesus, but they're demons and they make their children like that. And that's why that person, God says, I know. Look at your fruits, look at your children's fruits. And he makes them not do well accordingly. So it's my sins, what I've planted, what my ancestors have planted that have gone down to my children. So if I keep selling my body, that's what your children do. If you keep lying, your children do that. If you don't want to go to church, your children won't go to church. It all comes out exactly. So if the parents are fixed and the children are fixed, so then all the problems will be sol solved, but you don't do that. So my family problems, why is it that I'm not doing well? You have a look at your children, and as you look at that and you repent, then you'll be fixed. You see if it's a lie or not. So if you look at that family, you can see, by looking at the parents, by looking at the children, you can see what sin they're committing. So, if there are pears, so that's a pear tree. It's it's exactly. So, if your parents are dis, uh, if your children are disobedient, what or whatever the parents are not doing well in, if you are fixed, then you'll do well. But who is it that fixes you? God. Let's read Proverbs eighteen fourteen. The spirit of a man can endure his sickness, but as for a broken spirit, who can bear it? Amen. Do you know how wrongly you look at the Bible? What do you have to do before you look at the Bible? You have to repent it, repent and then look at the Bible. As much as you lack in repentance, then the word has nothing to do with you. There's no workings. Not just that, that word will kill you. As much as you look at the Bible, you will be ruined. So you look at people who go to fake churches. When you come here and you do four-step repentance, According to the word, without this, it's a fake sermon. It's a sermon that will kill you. That's the word. It's not something we've made up. So after you realize this, and with a loving heart, you go to a fake church and you tell them, you have to live according to this word. After that, they don't want anything to do with you. Demons, they won't have anything to do with you. They refuse to love their neighbor. Even though you want them to do well, they won't meet up with you. And then they say, oh, that, you know, you're in the wrong. Straight away, you can see why they don't do well. What about us? Even though they curse us, we want them still to do well. This word is living. It makes us do well. So we want them to do well, but they hate it. Who is it that Jesus 
disadvantaged. Sure, we may do the wrong thing, and yes, we may disadvantage others, but Jesus, he never disadvantaged anyone. He had nothing that was his. He had nowhere to lay his head, and yet still people cursed him. He, t in 10,000 things, he wanted them to believe and to do well. He healed um, diseases and, and fed them. But even now, it's the same. They treated him as an enemy. Galatians chapter 4, verse 29. So if you do not love your neighbor, is that faith? Can you go to heaven? Where in the Bible does it say that? Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. If you do not forgive others, you cannot be forgiven. So how can you go to heaven? You know, people lie so much. What does it say here? The spirit of a man. So it's not a beast. The spirit of a man can endure his sickness. So this is what God says. So a man has a spirit. The Holy Spirit is inside of him. That person can win over sickness. So someone who has the Holy Spirit can win over sickness. But a man who is a beast, the Spirit does not come to him. So he, they cannot win over their sickness. There's only two choices. There's no other way. So if you cannot win over your sickness, then you're not a man. You have something filthy inside of you where you deceive others. Envyings, jealousies, grumblings, complainings, making excuses. You are those people who used to come to our church and don't anymore. They always make excuses. If you make excuses, do you have faith? Are you, a, are, you a, are you the Holy Spirit or a demon? And that is because of their ancestors. Their ancestors were so good at betraying, and that's gone down exactly to the children. And yet they don't know. So if you treat that person as a man, you're exactly the same, because it's like with like. They're pitiful. They're a beast, so you pray for them and you entrust it to God. That's all that we should end with. So um, the spirit of a man, so not someone who's like a man, a man, someone who has revived their conscience, the Holy Spirit comes inside of them. That person can win over their sickness. But those people who can't win over their sickness, you know, our outer person becomes corrupt and dies and you know you can die suddenly so our outer person will um, in the end will um, will break down but those people who God makes suffer and then end up going to hell that's not the blessings of late age so even if you live one day with God that's better than a thousand years without Psalms chapter 84 verse 10 so don't say anything to your children it's what you've passed down to them you know people who are studying genetics they're saying oh this is all genetics But the Bible has said this thousands of years ago. Whatever you've planted, if it's thorns, then you'll get it back. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. So what kind of personality are you, your children? You have to realize it's come down from your ancestors, from your family. So whatever your ancestors have done, you can tell what it is by what you want to do now. If you want to go sing, or if you want to sell things, you do exactly what your ancestors did because it comes down to us via heredity. So sometimes some siblings do something completely different but even that has come from some relative and that's why the Holy Spirit can't come inside of my heart. Once we revive our conscience we become a man. So a man is someone who has the Spirit And that person can win over his sickness. That's what God has said. But you look at people who don't do well. They, this, they can't do this. So the spouse is exactly the same. And the, your children are exactly the same. You look at people who don't do well. Have a look around. You look around at, at people's fruits. People who don't do well, 
Because they made themselves not do well, their children don't do well. But the children don't know. No, the parents don't know that they've passed it down to their children. The spirit can win over sickness. If your spirit does well, then all things do well. So you're able to win over sickness. If you're able to win over sickness, that means you're going to heaven. You can, you can receive all things. So who is the problem? The problem is the person who is problematic is the one that cannot win over sickness. Someone who's supposed to die, they don't die. Someone who's supposed to live, 100% they're supposed to live, but they die. So what we see with our eyes and the way God sees is different. Someone seems completely normal, but if they're useless, then God will suddenly kill them. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 1. This person seems 100% like they should die, but yet they don't. Why? If they love God, then even if they receive uh, a shameful salvation, you know, these people, yes, they suffer with a disease until they repent. So those people, their ancestors have done all sorts of evil deeds. It comes out all in their children. So whatever the ancestors have done, three and four generations have to eat it. So, you should realize, oh, this is what my ancestors have done. So, how is it that we should live today? First of all, our heart is first. There's no one but God who can fix our heart. God, who says he helps us at dawn, helps us in our hearts. So, verse 14, the spirit of a man can endure his sickness. But as for a broken spirit, who can bear it? So here, Christ is how you live and Jesus is to rise up. So you have to be godly and chosen to be risen. So because when you read this verse, you don't know this. That's why nothing happens. So it, things can change whether you're living or being raised up. If you live and yet you lie down as a vegetable, you end up harming everyone around you. But if you are godly and you are chosen, then you end up risen. Once you rise up, then you can help others. That is what faith is. So when you look at the word, without the old, without the New Testament, can you can you interpret this? No. Without four step repentance you cannot. And so that's why even reading the Bible you're doing it wrongly. So how can you do well? If you don't connect the electricity properly, then the electricity won't flow. If there's rust or or there's something blocking. It's the same with the word. We need to realise. So if your spirit is broken, if the, if the spirit, the heart is broken, then there's no one who can make you get up again. It is only God who gives us the Holy Spirit. John f chapter 15 verse 26. So without God, please, don't do whatever you please. Just because no one's looking, you just throw rubbish ar around or you spit somewhere. You receive that back exactly to your children. So just say you spat somewhere. Your children, a, a little young child, will pick up a, 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 a cracker that someone with lung disease has spat on and that and that snack has that has that spit on and then your child will eat it so are you going to just spit anywhere if you don't spit because you're worried about getting a fine you're an evil person it has to be it has to be a fundamental thing after knowing this do you know how scared I am how afraid I am 
to do anything? So, who is it that can make your actions rise up? There's no one on this earth. So here it says the problem is the spirit. Who? Who can raise that spirit up? If you, if your spirit, your spirit is, a, is what can win over sickness. In other words, you can do well in all things. Let's find only God, only God can raise up our spirit. Let's find Acts chapter 20 verse 21. I don't know what you're doing, but God, this, these precious promises, you said that by, by the Spirit we can win over sickness. When we obey, then miracles happen where water becomes wine. In other words, you can earn money. So in other words, all things will be possible. When Elijah pray that cloud as small as a hand whether it be small things or great things if you obey the word miracles will happen so if you obey God's word it's God who brings about miracles God says he's prepared everything for you to take it do you know what your do you know what your weakness is you say oh that won't work because of this because of this law or this rule. If you say, oh, that's not possible. All you have to do is obey. All you have to do is put out that stuff over the Red Sea. It's all because of your thoughts. Are your thoughts inside Christ or outside? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 to 6. This is why you don't do well. You're always, you're always stuck in your, your manners or your or the regulations. You know, I'm not saying don't keep them. I'm saying the order is wrong. In front of God, those those rules and regulations, they're not what, that's not what's first. David, when did he seek manners? You know, when God suddenly made him do it, he became crazy and he was and he was drooling. All you have to do is obey God. But you do not obey. But always you're seeking the the etiquette or the the manners or you know God wants to work but it's you because it's not according to your thoughts you won't do it why don't you say amen because you're in the middle of thinking all you have to do to God's word is to say amen there's nothing but obedience there's nothing but amen so 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 if you say amen miracles will happen and you will give glory to God but you don't and instead you just think when it comes to God's word and then you say that you don't do well well of course so your children even more so will be like this because they've added uh, let's read Acts chapter 20 verse 21 solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ Amen so there's nothing to do toward God except repent. It is only God who can make our spirit live or die or be fixed. And what is it that then we have to do toward God? There's nothing to do but repent. So if we serve Christ, we please God. If we please God, he doesn't leave us alone. John chapter 8 verse 29. If God is with you, all things will work out. So our spirit, God gives the Spirit as a gift. So it says, repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we repent toward God, He will make us believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read it again. Solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So whether you're Jew, Jews or Greeks, in other words, anyone, anyone here, when you hear this word, if you repent toward God, then you will receive faith in, in Jesus Christ. So if you continue to do four-step repentance, then God will give us the gift of faith. Someone with faith 
in the name of Jesus Christ will also give you the Holy Spirit. Let's find John chapter 15 verse 26. So all we have to do is repent, but you don't. You just memorize God's word. So you end up killing yourself. So when I see that, it is so pitiful. Let's read together. When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. Amen. So it is the Spirit of Truth. The truth is inside of Jesus. And that's when the Holy Spirit comes. Who sends him? The Father. He sends him in the name of faith, which is Jesus. So when we repent toward God, then through Jesus, he will give us the gift of faith. When we continue to repent, then in his name, we will receive the Spirit. When our spirit lives, then we become godly. And if we get up, if we rise up, then we're able to win over all sickness. We're able to go to heaven. We do well in all things. But who is it that can that can raise up the spirit? There's no one in this world except by forced at repentance. That's Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. You look at people who don't do well. They refuse to say amen. Because they have demons, they sit there researching. So if someone beside you isn't saying amen, you can say, ah, they're not doing well. Someone who does well, the word is like sweeter than honey. They keep saying amen. That person will do well. When you come to our church, someone who obeys and says amen, and those people, they do well. Those people who don't, they've got problems. If they're living according to their thoughts, they're enemies of God, and they just sit there. That person will suffer so much. So you can see that they suffer, that their children every day, they don't know when a bomb's going to explode and yet you're so shameless why live like that? when I tell you to look around those people who can come but don't, they kill their children, they kill themselves and they kill their children have a look you see what happens to that person soon they have an accident something explodes it's because of what they've planted when you hear this and you say oh, oh he's talking about this deacon or that deacon no it's all mine otherwise soon you'll end up with a problem this is what I witnessed to you I thought that you had to come to dawn service once you became an elder if you go to a fake church without Christ who is it that comes to dawn so it's uh, less than a hundred people just a few I thought I thought if you became an elder that's when you go to dawn service I thought that's why you become an elder um, only those people who go to dawn service they're the ones that become elders I didn't know that it's because you have to receive help but because I t did that my children are exactly the same and so when I see that all I do is repent I don't do anything else I've passed it down to them how can I blame them that's why if you look at your children you know what is faith Fa Christ is eternal Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 Forced at repentance is eternal so if you come here and you are eternal then God will heal you eternal um, eternity is the Holy Spirit Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 so if you have eternity God will heal your sickness he will give you the Holy Spirit but if you can't be healed then you don't have Christ you don't have eternity soon the whole family betrays and departs that's why they don't do well if you have the Holy Spirit then you can win over sickness but you don't have the Holy Spirit in other words you're sitting here deceiving and that's why you come here and you fall asleep you can't even pray for your own problems Moses in the Exodus who is it that died Pharaoh or his son why was it that the son died when Pharaoh was more evil Pharaoh, Pharaoh's evil was just before death but because the father and mother's son was added onto the sons that's why the son died first because the son dies first that's how the parents hearts will be more tormented 
So who is it that dies earlier, the husband or the wife? Whoever needs to be tormented more. So, so if someone out of, out of the children, the one that cries the most about their mother or father dying, it's that child that killed that parent. Why? Because they were trusting or depending on that parent instead of God. That's all evil. So God, he wants to, to cut this off and, and he waits to see if you want to live or die. So who makes it like this? So if the wife dies first from a disease, it's either the husband or the child that has, that has Ill eaten her up. You can see according to the Bible. So you can see, oh, it's because of this child that that parent died, or it's, the, it's Pharaoh who made his son die. So you can see who will die first. Who does this? Me. It's me now doing this. Now, without the Holy Spirit, we cannot revive our spirit. It's God who gives us the spirit to win over sickness. If our spirit is broken, no one can raise us up. No learning, no religion, nothing on this earth except God. How? By giving us the Holy Spirit. So to live and to get up, I have, the reason why I've spoken about this many times is because of this. So without the New Testament, if you speak of the Old Testament without using the New Testament, that's a fake. So starting from my own family, let's live. Let's stop killing our children. Let's stop killing our families. So if you've come here with problems, you don't even have to ask what, why they've come. You see during, during the sermon, if they say amen or, and if they uh, obey, if they don't, it's that person that is killing their family. Oh, I can't live without my father or I can't live without that mother. It's that child that is killing their parent because God wants to cut that off and stop that bad habit and to make them into a man. Please, let's not get caught up in that. Let's repent properly and live properly. Let's all pray. Who is it that can revive my, who can raise my spirit? Only God. And what do we do toward God? Repent. Father God, there's, because we listen to your word without repentance, it's like we're just staring at you so brazenly. Thank you so much for pointing this out. There is no one that can make our spirit live and ra be raised up except you. This spirit is to have the Holy Spirit which wins over all sickness. May we be witnesses of this. Our spirit has to do well for all things to do well. Someone who does well in all things, they receive health. May we receive the Holy Spirit and receive this blessing. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen.